Great. We'd like to welcome Max Homa here in the interview room at the RBC Heritage. Max, making your third start here uh, this week. What are you looking forward to most this week at Harbor Town? Yeah, uh, I love this golf course. It's a shame I've only this is only my third time here. The golf course is so unique. It's a lot like uh, uh, Colonial in that we play a lot of big and far and hit it as high as you can. And here you're really working it, and it's maddening. There's trees off the sides of the fairway when you're in the fairway that are in your way. So I enjoy the challenge of that. Uh, it's playing different uh, golf courses is one of my favorite parts about getting to travel around on tour. So uh, this is definitely a treat for all of us. A few days have passed since you earned your best finish in a major championship. What are some positives that you can take away from that week uh, in Augusta? Yeah, um, a lot of a lot of positives in that I handled my nerve really well. I dealt with a lot of expectation and, you know, didn't let that affect my golf game too much. I had never been in a position of being in contention going into a Sunday, let alone, or a Saturday, any of those days, really. Uh, so it was fun to wake up for a couple of days and think, you know, there's a pretty decent chance I might be wearing a green jacket on Sunday and to still excel and feel good about my golf and yeah, just a lot of a lot of good stuff to take from last week, and uh, just in general, like what a memory! <laughs> if I never play another golf tournament, I, it would be it's pretty cool to have that uh, seared into my brain. All right, we'll open up some questions for Max. If you want to raise your hand, we can get a microphone to you. Can start here with Paul. Max, you talk about memories being seared into your brain. Will there be, is there a lasting image you have or a moment from last week? Yeah, walk in uh, on Sunday from 11 to 12, 11 green to 12 T. I had a good buddy of mine remind me going into Saturday that I need to look around and smell the roses and appreciate what I get to do. Uh, you know, because I've seen some not so great parts of professional golf. And uh, so I was very aware on the weekend to smile. Joe kept reminding me that this is the most fun we're, we've ever had, like appreciate that and then get back to work. So I tried every day to walk up to that 12th tee with my you know, eyes up and look around and scan the crowd. And getting a, I got basically a standing ovation walking to that tee and I just tried to stare at it as long as I could and enjoy it. We got it on you know, Saturday as well. So just something about walking to that 12th tee is uh, pretty, Pretty amazing feeling. Go to Ron next. Hey, Max, I know you talked previously about your major championship record not being quite what it was. I mean, so what does this do for you now? I mean, does it reinforce something you knew about yourself or does it teach you something you didn't know? It, yeah, I guess it reinforces that my golf game's good enough. I think most anybody who plays a major it is but until you get to feel that you don't know I did absolutely nothing special on the weekend and had a very good chance minus a bad bounce on the 12th so th that's kind of what I've taken going into the other ones that I didn't have any magic on the weekend I didn't chip in I didn't make a putt outside of 12 feet for two days and you know standing on 12 tee I'm one about to be one back of Scotty best player in the world and one of the best players I think we'll ever see. So I think that just physically I take that with me, that my physical golf game is, is good, good enough. Um, other than that, I mean, it's just, again, going back to just handling myself when the heat's on, playing with Tiger for two days and leading the golf tournament after those two rounds. That's, a, that's you know, a challenge in itself. So, yeah, I mean, I, I hadn't had a good major finish uh, prior to the Open last year. I mean, I, I got 13th at Southern Hills, but I mean, was miles back and, and just kind of played well in spots to maintain that, but never really had any hope to win any of them. So I guess now maybe a little bit of the monkeys off the back. I know I can and that the work I'm doing is right. And it just all really comes down to the mental for me. Like I didn't change anything about my golf game last week. I just really changed my head and got out of my own way and just played some golf. Go ahead, Doug. 
I had a couple, Max. You just referenced Scotty as being one of the best we'll ever see. Um, how big is the gap right now, do you think, from Scotty and, and the rest of the field? And, and from your perspective, do you, do you look at that as daunting or, or more challenging facing him? Yeah, I mean, the gap seems to be quite large. He's gone first, first, second, first. Three of those events are <laughs> the best fields we've got. One of them is another good field on a really difficult golf course. I think we've seen people do this over the years as far as um, excellence for time, uh, over, over a little bit of time. His is, seems to be sustained a bit longer than I can remember from a lot of people. You know, the Rory's of the world, the Tigers, the Jordans, these guys have done this for a while. But the way Scotty, you know, I, I played with him two no, was it last year or two? I don't know. I played with him in the Masters in the U.S. Open. I think it was last year on Thursday, Friday. He hit it unbelievable. And I just kept thinking to myself, man, like, must be nice. Like, that's just incredible. And then he's done it for a year. <laughs> Those are, like, great weeks that you, like, harken back to. He does this every week. So it's definitely u unique what he's doing. Uh, is it more daunting or challenging? More challenging, I would say. Um... I think it's inspiring. It makes you look at your game even more closely to figure out what you would do to get on his level. I think because of the Tiger era, when he was just running through golf tournament after golf tournament and just annihilating everybody, it was probably more daunting because we had never seen anything like that. Sc Scotty is tremendously talented and a hard worker and a, I mean sadly a better person wish I could hate him but it's not utterly shocking what he does he just does it over and over and over again that's amazing so I feel like he almost makes it seem very realistic that we should do that he just seems like he's playing on the driving range every day so I don't know it looks more challenging than daunting and uh it's, it's really amazing what he's doing. I, I can't believe how good he is at week in, week out, going through his process and just being so committed and invested in it. And, I mean, it obviously it's showing in the results, but I imagine it's, it's harder than it looks, and he's just making it, making it look so easy that I think it gives us some hope that maybe you know, one or multiple of us can start to do something like he's doing. Would you be in favor of a mandatory three-month paternity leave? <laughs> no, I, w I want to beat his ass pretty bad at some point. So uh, I I'd be lying if I wasn't thinking a little bit about last week if, if Meredith did go into labor. But uh, no, I think, you know, the beauty of this is you want to beat the best when they're at their best. Uh, it's fun. It's hard. And I think that's, that's, uh, that's the cool part about the opportunities providing us right now, that if you beat Scotty Shuffler pretty much any week, you had a good week. And I think that's a... That's, uh, that's a pretty cool part of where our sport is at right now. Stay on the right over here. Max, uh, after an emotionally draining week like that, and especially an emotional Sunday, can you kind of just run us through, like, what do you do on Monday, the day after that? I uh, hopped in the car and drove three hours here. Called a bunch of people just to have them break up my drive. So shout out to DJ Pajowski. He helped me for about an hour and a half to two hours of that drive. Uh, reminisce a little on the drive when I didn't have service on how the week went, what I thought I could have done better, what I thought I did well. Get, stretch and keep my body kind of loose. Uh, and then I went and got, uh, got some food and tried to go to bed as early as I could because I was uh, pretty, pretty uh, worn out by the end of the drive. Uh, and, yeah, I don't know. Appreciate things a little bit, you know, like remember the cool stuff talk to other people about the cool stuff and then uh like i said have a little bit of introspection on what you could what i could have done better and what I, I would like to see going forward but you know not like i said before not every week uh, even great weeks end, end with uh, a win and that does sting in our game but long-term wins are a bit different than just week to week i hope to be back there again and if i'm not back there there i'd like to be back there somewhere else in a, in a pressure moment like that so i'd like to continue to learn from all of these uh weeks that i do have a chance to win 
Where did you get the food and what did you get? Uh, I absolutely demolished Chick-fil-A on my drive down. A sweet woman paid for it, actually, uh, in the drive through line. And then, uh, then when I got to town, I went to Giuseppe's and got a pizza. I never really eat pizza. Cheese doesn't sit so well with me, but I'm all by myself this week. So I decided to splurge a little. <laughs> Just one seat over. Can you give us maybe two or three big takeaways you got from playing with Tiger that you could apply to your game? It's like, I want to learn how to do that. His uh, short game is otherworldly. It's the, the array of shots he has is more than I've probably seen anyone have. And that was just over a two day span, so. I find that to be something uh, I would love to somehow figure out how to do. And his commitment to each shot he hits seems like, as, you know, that's something I, I think Scotty's tremendous at. So I, uh, I would like to be able to do that as well. Go in the back right. Hey, Max. Um, <clears throat> I read a story yesterday about how the TV ratings at the Masters were a little bit down. Very hard to analyze that stuff or to know what it means. But I did want to ask you, to whatever connection you have with what you consider an average fan or people who watch golf who aren't players, do you sense that their attitudes have shifted uh, over the past two years? Is there any kind of fatigue because of the live stuff? Like, what, what are you seeing? Yeah, in person, no. I mean, I've actually been pretty amazed this year with the fatigue I have from all of this garbage going on. But each event on site has felt amazing. The Masters was incredible. Bay Hill was awesome. The players was awesome. All these events I've been to have been great. Today was um, incredible how many people are out there for a Wednesday. Yet on the internet and, and you know, th what I'm seeing with those numbers and all that, it does seem like, yeah, I would imagine fans have fatigue. They probably should have fatigue. I don't know why they'd want to care about how much money we're making and how much more money we want to make. Uh, it's, it's quite nauseating. So, yeah, I... I, I have been told probably not to look too much into all those numbers because these things happen and there's trends and things and whatever. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to go into that because I really don't know anything about it. But, yeah, I, I, I can only speak on what I know we're trying to do. We had a really great PAC meeting yesterday. I was really inspired by the hope and, and plan to make it better for the fans. I think we hit this year and a half or two year rut as as both golfers and golf leagues that was just about making the players happy and and unfortunately uh and quite obviously the fans were not benefited by that so i'm i'm very hopeful that at some point here soon uh we've been shown that we are nothing without those watching us uh and they can stop watching us whenever they'd like so uh, hopefully more innovation will go into making their viewing, pro uh, uh, viewing process a lot more engaging and fun because uh, th that, that's why we get to do this. On a completely different note, what did you and DJ talk about? <laughs> uh, man, I missed him. Uh, I, I, I got to see him recently, so uh, we, we just talked about, we, we fix the world's problems every time we talk. So we talked a lot about the live tour stuff. Uh, I asked him what it looked like when we were playing the tournament because I, you know, I don't have much of a feel. So I said, did it ever look like Scotty wasn't going to win? Uh, things like that. So it's nice to get a, a viewer's outlook on, the, on a golf tournament here and there. All right, come down to the front left. Hi, Max. So you mentioned you also spent a lot of that drive like reflecting and stuff. Is there anything specific you wanted to change from maybe last week to this coming week? in your strategy or anything specific you thought about? Yeah, as much as I thought I did my best job mentally last week, there one thing stuck out to me at times uh, throughout the weekend is I just wish I would have backed myself on certain golf shots a little bit more. Had uh, a wedge on Saturday on seven that, you know, Joe made it quite clear that we were not missing left of that pin. And I didn't trust that I could aim two yards right of it and hit it two yards right of it. I tried to make sure it was right of it. Um, similarly, on uh, my tee shot on 13 on Sunday, I just made the double, so I'm going to give myself a little grace. My brain was kind of moving fast, but 
I needed to hit, if I hit a good three wood and hooked it, I could get there in two pretty easily. And um, kind of halfway back, I didn't want to make another mistake and hook it in the water. So I hung it way right and couldn't get there in two. So I think just the progression of the mental, you know, kind of typically starts with the attitude and then it gets into being very present. And then I think that, you know, hopefully the next step for me is just to trust how good I am especially when I'm playing good and, and take some things on, not necessarily strategically, just literally once I stand over the golf ball, just trust that this is what we're going to do and it might work, it might not, but let's kind of stack the, or put the chips uh, behind ourselves a little bit and, uh, and then go, you know, see what, see what my golf game's got. Go ahead, Paul. A uh, bit off topic, but I go on YouTube and I see you pop up on a Bob Doe sports video or a four play video or with DJ and, NLU, what do you gain from doing some of those maybe lighter, fun sides of things that maybe expose you to some fans? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't. Or what do you enjoy about it? Yeah, I just guess I just like doing them. I don't do it to gain anything, I guess. I really enjoy Bob uh, and the boys. I enjoy all those people. So it's more so when they reach out, it's more like they're asking me to play some golf. So it's just fun. I like beating them. I guess that's what I gain at times but yeah I, I don't know like golf's fun they're really fun they make it fun to play with them and I like what they do for the sport uh it doesn't have to be for men's professional golf it's just for the game I think you know I love golf I want golf to continue to thrive as much as you know to Shane's question about people watching golf that doesn't mean golf's going down it's actually going way up more people are playing and that's cool uh, would I like people to do both? Sure. But I, I'm just glad that golf is continuing to uh, gain popularity because, um, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty cool how many of my friends nowadays are talking about going to play golf on the weekends and telling me about their rounds. So that's been fun. So I, that's what I really appreciate about what they're, all, the, all those people you mentioned are doing for just golf at large. Yeah, it just seems like more and more tour pros are doing that type of stuff, um, maybe just to see, to have a little bit more fun out, outside of the game. Yeah, I, I would think so. Um, like I said, they're very kind people. They're fun. They're entertaining uh, just to be around. So it's just cool to, to be with them. And, and, you know, we have such high stress situations in, in our daily lives as far as, you know, week to week goes. Starting tomorrow, Thursday to Sunday, is just, you know, blinders on and, and try your hardest. And there you can kind of talk some trash and make some jokes and hit some cool shots and you know there's really not a massive consequence so it, i don't know it's enjoyable i was going to play golf anyway so might as well play with those uh those guys who make me feel a lot better about what i do All right, go back to doug in the center there's light at the end of this tunnel for the golf fan there's innovation uh possibilities it's not nearly as this is just that that this is just what golf looks like, and we need to hope people like it. There's ways we can manipulate it a little bit in a good way to gain fan engagement, make it more fun for them to watch. It was it was r truly all about just what we need to do better as a tour for golf fans to be more inclined to watch. And I think at times where it's easy to just say, well, this is just what golf looks like. And I think that it was nice to see that people have other outlooks on that that are a lot more optimistic. Yeah. And secondly, I kind of wanted to go back to Chick-fil-A for a minute. Um, who paid for your lunch? How did that come about? It was cool. I don't know. I was in the drive through by myself, and uh, I went to order. And this, the person taking the orders told me that the woman in the row next to me had paid for <laughs> whatever I was going to get. Uh, she said that her son is uh, like three or four, and I'm his favorite golfer. So it was pretty cool. It, it was, yeah, I don't know. Those kinds of things, uh, I still pinch myself. I'm not quite sure. She was next to you in line or behind you? Or yeah, it's a two, it's two, two line Chick-fil-A, you know, busy. Uh, yeah, she paid for it. I rolled my window down. We chatted for a couple minute or so, and uh, then, I, then I ate it. <laughs> Paid lunch for the guy who just won like 640000 whatever you got. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was quite kind. That's what I say. I just pinch myself uh, at times with the kindness that people, people have given me just because I <laughs> play some golf. I uh, feel very fortunate for that. All right, Max, thank you for the time. Thank Best you, guys. Take week. care.